Hello and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a demo walkthrough of uh, a little bit of exploded assembly and how you can use that to aid in the use of the assembly to workbench and the animations and assembly constraints. Uh, let me start out by doing the exploded assembly a little bit. So I have a completed exploded assembly and you can see that it's currently in its ex ex expand all trajectories position. So when I click that you see nothing happens. Uh, but when I click the collapse to assembled position you see it, everything that's assembled is in its assembled position. And this is useful for, for doing um, what I find using the assembly to workbench because um, you can toggle between exploded and unexploded but not interfere with the assembly constraints and the exploded and unexploded can help you to uh, access parts of the drawing um, that otherwise may be hard to get to and then also um, if you mess something up you can you can use explode the uh, the trajectories to get the get parts back where you want them because in the assembly 2 um, workbench when you animate something it's physically moving that part so you can animate something um, to another spot and then you have to work to get it back where you want so it's nice to have a reference point with the exploded assembly and let's let's try um, just a, a basic move so I can show you what I mean so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transform this one sort of Traxxas looking bearing and it, it's not really but I just you know it's a simulation of that so I've, I've moved it out out of position and say that was by mistake and you'll see in, when you're using the assembly to workbench you can make little mistakes like clicking the wrong clicking in the wrong order and moving something out of position uh, so you know I'll, I'll try to point that out when we get to it but being now that I have my assemb my um, exploded assembly done I can get this back in position simply by clicking um, go to the assembled position now you see it's back where it should be and then I can explode it back out to to, to a working uh, situation so so with our exploded assembly open um, I'm going to start adding some constraints and, and you're going to be able to see how these assembly constraints uh, help to to hold the assembly together and also allow for certain animations so I'm going to start by doing a sp spherical constraint and the way you, that's uh, indicated here you can see add a spherical constraint and you see it's a ball and a socket basically so I'm going to pick my ball and my socket and the way FreeCAD works as you'll see in a second is that during the in the assembly it takes the second item you choose so I'm picking two spherical surfaces that spherical and this one it takes the second item you choose and aligns it to the first according to the strength you select restraint constraint you select sorry so you see how it moved um, the ball into place okay so now I'm going to do that in the wrong order so you can see how uh, a constraint failure uh, is going to give, give you work to move things back if you don't have the exploded assembly done so I'm going to do, go to the assembled position I really could just and explode it back out so now you see my uh, bearing ball there is back where I want it so say I pick the bearing ball first and then I pick this curve inside this inside the rod arm here and then when I go into assembly and do the spherical constraint, you see it moves the second item to the first item that you've picked. Well, that's not what I want. So um, now this rod arm is going to be out of position. Now, unfortunately, I don't think I included that in my assembly, so it's I'm not going to be able to put that back with exploded assembly. Let's see. Yeah, I didn't. So I'm going to actually, so I can use, um, instead of, the exploded assembly putting it back I'm going to use my I'm going to create a new constraint to bring it back where I want it so these the constraints in the exploded assembly can be used to easily position things so it brings the second item onto the first so I'm going to pick the first item is where I want this arm to end up and that the arm is the second item and I'm going to go into assembly 2 and I'm going to do spherical constraint again and now it's back to where I want it and you'll see if I go back to exploded assembly, I I have all my I still have my assembly options. 
So part of my assembly might be to, you know, explode this so it has a remembered first position. Um, but, you know, you can, you can make do. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can work with uh, the assembly two to um, add animation to, uh, you know, work with animation um, of, of the joint. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select, I'm going to create the actual spherical joint I want and click that. Oops. And I can't, so I constantly do it backwards. Sorry about that. So let's get rid of that one. Now in this case, I have, I have the first one, the correct one that I did. Let's see if it can solve it back to where it was. Nope. Didn't move it back. Um, so let me reposition this all again. So the way I'm trying to remember it is that the second item you select moves to the first. So let's try to see if that's really what it is or if I've got it backwards again. Um, so I first selected this, second there, let's try it. Nope, it's first item moves to second. So that's backwards in my opinion. So if you know why it's that way, let me know. Um, if not, that's okay. Uh, so it's second moves to first. So let's, so you can see how I, I can get back to where I was because I have the exploded assembly done. So second moves to first, so first, second. Let's try it again, see if I can get this right. Yeah, so second moves to first. Um, okay, so now I have, uh, let me get rid of all these. Okay, now that I've got that cleaned up, let's work through the, and remembering second moves to first. So, um, in the, in the constraint in the assembly two constraint system, second moves to first. I'm going to say that a lot because I'm trying to remember it myself as well as hopefully teach it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a spherical constraint here, and I want to add. So now that ball that ball is going to be constrained within this socket. I'm going to add an axial constraint to this screw and the and the inside of that ball socket. And you'll notice some some. So for the axial constraint, it's not going to move any because right now they're in the, in the same axes. Um, I don't know if that took, let me do it again. It's not going to move because they're already in the same axes. So uh, an axial constraint won't, will only move the item uh, into the same axes. It, it won't line them up in any other way. So that's, let's try, do that again. So you see, I selected the two cylinders, the inside of this and the outside of that and I select my axial constraint. So that's good, that worked that time. So then there's one more, let's see. Um, all right, let's add an axial constraint to this. So this one will move and you'll say it's gonna wreck. And at first you, you, you think it might wreck your, um, your explosion diagram. So I'm gonna create an axial constraint between the inside of this bolt and this. And this might be a constraint you don't need. Um, because that bolt really doesn't affect the animation that much. Uh, but just to show you how you can use this some. So I'm gonna create another, uh, so for the, to bring this in and keep it there, I'm gonna create a planar constraint. So I select that plane and I'm gonna select this plane. And your constraint selection has to do with a lot with what they're, what's gonna conflict with what. Um, so I need one more planar constraint to hold this whole thing into position when it's animating. And that's between this Traxxas bearing and this um, cone piece of the carriage. So to get to that, I'm gonna explode it first. So I'm gonna go back to my exploded assembly and explode it. So you see now I still, we still maintain all of these constraints, um, but we can, we can move stuff around and it'll solve, by, it'll solve the constraints remain which I think personally is really awesome. So let's, um, let's circ sorry, I'm in rotation confusion here. So I get these two planes, if I can get it. Ugh. Get rid of that line, okay. So I have that one plane and that plane. So let's make a planar constraint there. Okay. So you see that's my whole joint is um, is constrained the way I want it. Now you're gonna run into a lot of constraint conflictions. These are these are more complicated than say the constraints in a sketcher, because uh, it's hard, it's a little harder to visualize what's being constrained and where. So now without 
without constraining any of this, I'm going to animate this to show you how uh, we can animate that arm. So once you've done your constraints, you can go right into the animation. And there's a bunch of different types of animations here, um, but they're related to the constraints that you created. These are these degrees of freedom are done as you uh, as you um, create your constraints. So I'm just going to show a couple. Of, I'm going to show the different ones they are. And my suggestion is let the animation finish because this is actually moving the actual object. It's not, um, and you may get something out of position if you don't let it finish. So you can see that's. So that's an axial from my axial constraint on the screw. Um, this is going to be the axial constraint on the nut. So to see that, we have to go here. And you can see the nut spinning. Not that that it would be good in this situation. So there's a uh, linear thing. So the linear one's added for the ax when you create the axial constraint. So it's linear along that axis. And let's do an ax this axis rotation. So that's the, uh, the traxis bearing, um, again, on that same axis. And this is the final axis one, I think. And you see that's, okay, so that, I don't know what went wrong with that one, but I don't know what axis that's going on. Um, so that, something got selected badly there. So let's do this linear motion, okay. That one is useless too. And I didn't get the one I wanted, which was the, con which was the spherical constraint. Um, and maybe I missed, maybe I didn't do, add that constraint. Let's go back and check it. If not, we're going to add it. All right, let's get rid of this one. Let's re-add it to the end um, to see if we can get it to, to come back. So I'm going to use my uh, exploded assembly to explode this. And then I'm going to, let's go. So first moves to second, uh, crud. Uh, second moves to first, I think it was. <laughs> so we've got to come up with a good saying for that for, let's see. So let's go into back into our assembly and let's do another, nope, it's got it backwards again. Anyway, let me try, let me try that. See if I can get that. All right, so that's that's the one I was looking for. It's the placement group. All right, so these, these create um, rotation around the spherical item. So you'll see how it, so that's just the, the tracks is rotating. So you can see how you can get to animating your your arms. So let's do each one so you can see. And that's and here's the final one. Do I have oh I have this one selected. So it'll add, it'll do everything you have selected. So so you see it's just doing a different uh, different vector rotations. Now as you're doing if you're doing this animation like I am I you know I don't want these uh, breaking into each other because you know that's not how they're it's penetrating the surfaces that's not uh, the real world there so I'm going to change the rotation amplification to 0.5 I'm going to set this as default because I use it all the time and now you can see that's a more reasonable animation of that um, I don't think there's any I don't know of any way to define edges you know and collisions and stuff like you might find in some other programs so you know the last thing for me would be to to do this for all four um, I've had trouble with that because I end up with some kind of constraint conflict that I haven't worked through yet. Um, but you know, now that I've messed this up, I think I can get it all back to where I want it or, or close with my exploded assembly. Um, so the only thing I have that got out of place is, are these two items. So I could just uh, I can just use the plane constraint to bring them back into order. So there you have it. There's a little uh, walkthrough of uh, exploded, using exploded, exploded assembly and the assembly two workbench. They work together to you know to create a nice um, assembly that you can work with easily and animate easily. Well, I don't know about easily, but anyway, have a great day. If you like my channel, please subscribe and uh, please comment if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see videos about or if you have just any suggestions. Let me know, comment and like, and have a great day. Thanks.